This is Tales of Heroes Training Tuesdays, number eight, American Armor, part two. Welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of Tales of Heroes right here on the Sound Strategy Network, www.sound-strategy.net. We are almost live from the year 1944 with another Training Tuesdays here. This is American Armor, Part 2. We're talking all about the tank depot and tactics and such to use with your armored vehicles. Now, I realize that last week we missed something when we were talking about the crocodile, specifically the, uh, the, the fire that comes with it. Speaking of fire, let me introduce my hot-as-hell co-host, Rogers. Welcome to the show. Why, thank you. That's a rather flattering assessment of no, myself. No, I meant your computer's overheating. you got to watch out. It's going to explode. Oh. Okay, yeah, well... Graphics card, thing. you know, and all that. Anyway, yeah. I'm Bridger, and uh, we are going to now give you a demonstration. Uh, Rogers, you have your men uh, properly equipped, like I asked? Yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're waiting. I don't know what exactly is going to... Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. But... Uh, well, this is, uh, this, is, this is an important thing. You see, I believe in science, and oh, science come. requires testing. Oh, run! Get out of there! Go! So as you can see, the men on the left are being in heavy cover, have Cut no faster! choice... But to uh, to die to the fire, they can't get out. <laughs> they are oh, trapped. God. The guys on the right, in the negative cover, are lasting <laughs> a bit longer. No, you cannot get away. There's, no, there's... I have to. Why is there so much water? They can't cut it. It's just not going to happen. All right, oh, so God. that clearly demonstrates the... Uh, the superiority of flame when dealing with heavy cover and dealing in negative cover, you can tell it was uh, considerably slower. Uh, and uh, I believe that concludes this week's science barbecue. Um, who's up for ribs? That was horrible. All right, the next thing I wanted to do is sort of a basic uh, thing that you can do with your tanks, but you know, maybe some new people who just got the game when the Steam sales don't know about this. Um, the tanks have heavier armor on the front than they do on the sides and rear. So basically, if you're getting shot sort of any direction within 180 degrees of the front, maybe a little less than that, it's usually going to hit the front armor, which is harder to penetrate for enemy vehicles. Now, if you're going up against a Tiger, it's not really going to matter if they hit your front or rear armor and you're a Sherman. But you know, if you're going up against a pack or a Panzer IV, uh, then you know front armor can make a huge difference. If it bounces off the front, it's only going to do about 15% of the damage it would normally do. Uh, in many circumstances. So, one of the things you always want to do is make sure you face your armor. So, if you click on where the tank is and you sort of drag, you can see that there's a, uh, uh, a little arrow that can show. So, if we want to face this way, we can just let go. If we want the, tra the, the, the tank to go here and then go somewhere, we can click and then right-click, drag, and hold it. And then if we want to, say, face there when you get there, we let go. So, now the tank's going to drive over there and face in the correct direction. Of course, he's going to take the long way around because he's a tracked vehicle. Nope, oh, I found your thing over here. Oh. But now he's turning around to face the direction we expect enemy to come from. Now, another thing that you can do with your tanks, and it's very important, is backing up. If you click behind your tank, you can see that the tank will back up. You can even turn a little bit. If you give it like that, he'll back and turn. So I can have him sort of turn back this way if I want to. Now, that only works so far if you get too far away... Um, then sometimes he'll sort of turn around like that. So you definitely want to stay within a few uh, degrees of backing up, but you can sort of click a lot in order to get him to back up in the correct direction. So let's try that again. So let's try to say we want to back up in the base here. You hold down shift and you click and you keep your click semi-close together, you see, and he'll back straight up. Now, if you click too far away any of those times, that's what happens. He turns around at one point and decides, no, I think it'd be faster for me to turn all the way around rather than just back up. You need to keep your clicks close together because if, it, if I clicked way back here, despite the fact that it's like straight behind my tank, he'll still turn around because he thinks, oh, I want to get there fast and driving forward is faster. But if you click just behind the tank, just a little bit further back, just a little bit further back, like this, he'll back all the way up. Just like that. So let's show an actual example of how that would be useful. All right, so let's see what happens. Let's say I'm just driving along this way, and I'm trying to see what's going on over here. I think I saw something there before. And, oh, crap, oh, crap, oh, crap. Stop, hit the Q. Okay, now I want to turn, face, and back up. Turn and face and back up. Keep backing up. Make sure every shot, there we go. Okay, so I took a little bit of damage. But it's okay, I got some engineers. Let me just repair right here. 
No reason to go all the way back to base. Let's just let's just repair right here. There's no problem. Um, this is something that you really want to avoid a lot, especially if you've got mobile enemy armor. Because after I got them repairing, I'm like, oh, what's going on over here? I'm gonna micro my. Oh crap! He's under attack. He's not safe at all. Generally. The most important thing to do when your armor takes damage is get it really far back, like almost back to your base. To a place where you can be sure that it will not be attacked by enemy Shreks or Piots or what have you, um, depending upon the faction, obviously. You wanted to get it behind a place where you already have line of sight so that you can keep backing it up. Too often, we will see players with a tank that just barely makes it out of an engagement, and they back it, you know, a screen away and then start repairing it and go about their way, their lives somewhere else on the battlefield. And then, of course, that tank gets blown up while it's being repaired, or before it can be repaired, because the engineers aren't even there yet, because it is still too close to the front line. So make sure that you always back up your Shermans, make sure you know how to face them and how to retreat properly. Keeping your armor alive is very important if you're ever using armor at all because uh, it's way cheaper to just repair a tank than it is to build a brand new one. So make sure that you always, always try to get them out alive and keep them alive. Despite the fact that the M10 does a ton of damage, and I'm gonna try to get behind him here, the M10's armor is kind of papery. <laughs> Damn mortar, mortar. Mortar's helping out apparently. So it seems unlikely because you're managed to do a great job of keeping your tank facing the correct direction, so I don't think that this M10 good. is going to survive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please keep that. All right, so let's take a situation here where I've got maybe an M10 out on its own coming up against a Panzer IV. Now, at this point, I could try to circle strafe, but I don't know what's back here. There's a very good chance there could be Shreks or, or an AT gun back there. I haven't explored it yet, so I don't want to go. Uh, I don't want to go back there and try to circle strafe and get around it. Even if I did, he could spin around me. And uh, so in this situation, the paper armor of the M10 sort of comes to comes to comes becomes clear, and it loses pretty much every time in a head-to-head -head confrontation with a with a Panzer IV. But what's a perfect situation for an M10? is chasing down a vehicle that's already damaged because the M10 has very strong penetration, so it's going to hit every shot, and it also has a very fast movement speed. So let's kind of see the same situation, except now we're sort of defending, and we're waiting for the Panzer IV to come into our field of view. So let's find out what happens here. All right, so here's another setup where the M10 has a slightly different situation. Instead of having to deal with the... Uh, Panzer IV head on. We've got a anti-tank gun that's backed up by a tank destroyer. You don't want your tank destroyer to be way out front. You don't want it to take those hits from the enemy tanks. Instead, the anti-tank gun usually has a much better job of avoiding damage, but it's kind of weak, so the enemy might see that and try to dive it and get behind it so that it can take it out easy. In that case, he's going to take two or three shots from the AT gun, and then the M10 can easily finish it off as he tries to get behind it. The other option is if he sees the AT gun, takes a shot or two, and goes, oh crap, and tries to reverse out of here, then the M10, with its high movement speed, can chase it down and kill it, instead of just having the opponent repair it, and then nothing ever happens. So that's why having a fast anti-tank vehicle along with your anti-tank gun is a good way to really get a trap on an enemy who was not expecting to be hit at that long range with an AT gun. So let's see how it happens. Go ahead and come on in, Rogers, and we'll see what happens. So he's going to see the AT gun. It's going to probably get a shot or two on him, and then he's going to go, oh crap, I can't win this. Uh, I don't want to dive. I'm going to back out. As soon as I see that, I'm going to send my super fast M10 go, 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 go. And now that the... Uh, the Panzer IV starts Shit. with some damage. This is going to be a much more difficult fight for the Panzer IV. Ah. Especially if they have sex in the middle of it. Hedges! Uh oh, uh, it's going to be very close. It's going to oh, be very close. No He's chasing. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Fabulous. Together. Together in death. <laughs> Together. So that was an example of what might have worked, except I, I didn't uh, use armor piercing on the AT gun, which would have probably given the edge to my Panzer, uh, to my to my M10. But you get the idea, I hope, because that's not going to happen again. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, now another important thing to remember that if you're ever facing uh, Panzer Shrek infantry, for, for example, uh, in infantry anti-tank, that they have a much lower accuracy at range and that sometimes you can kite them pretty well, especially if you can get them to come out of heavy cover. So let's move into here. We've got Panzer Shreks. We're going to stay at maximum range. Only one of their Shreks hit. Now, if, we're, if they're going to try and chase us, we're going to back off and see what happens if they chase us now. And at, we're at max range, so that's where we want to stay. We want our machine gunner to do his thing. We want the main gun to try and shoot, and we want to keep backing up. Keep backing up. The Shreks have been losing a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, health here. There, we picked off another one. Now there's two left, and uh, we might be leading them into a trap, for example. We got another one. And again, we just keep backing up. We stay at long range, and they can't really fire if we stay at long range. This is a perfect example of what's called kiting, which is essentially when you take a, v a unit that's got a shorter range than you, and you stay far enough away so that they can't shoot. So as you can see there, if we had sort of charged into the Panzer Shreks, we might not have survived because they would have probably hit every barrage. And even if we would have done more damage because we would have been more accurate, it would have been a much closer fight. And this is more of a guaranteed way. If you stay just outside of their range, they may still try to chase you and you can do a ton of damage and lead them right into a trap. Hey, Rogers, do you see this? My Jeep is doing something weird. The uh, hell is that? It's just driving in circles. Perfect! Attack! Whoa! How did this hell here? What is this? <laughs> Damn it, do something, Jeep! <laughs> what are they? They're all missing! <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Let's. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them now, but. Attack the OP quickly, men! Holy. <laughs> it's doing damage! What? Uh, no! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my. Look at. Hey! Hey! <laughs> No, 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 no. You're not going to win this battle. Oh, no! Don't! You shot the OP! You shot the OP! No, you missed! You stupid sniper! Ah! No, God! Get him! It's the last stand! He's still alive! Yes! No! Victory! What a load of crap. That poor Jeep. He died. That poor P, I almost killed the OP. <laughs> With a shot from all the snipers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So I think that wraps up the show about armor, in which we conclude by a sniper duel to the death. Hey, it was a twenty-one sniper salute. What can I yes, say? Yes, that's exactly. <laughs> I actually did have twenty-one snipers. <laughs> all defeated by my one sniper. Uh, yeah, that's it. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs> Time to go.